All right, so I deleted my mage character because for this one, we're actually going to make a build with this mage. But first, we got to go from level 1 to 200. So that's going to be some grinding, which I'm just going to do off camera, and then we're going to come back. So I figured out, finally, what the stats are in the game. And all I had to do was use my one brain cell that I have and ask the developer if there is a spot to where you could see the statistics or like what they do so now since we know what the stats do so chance is your water damage agility is your air damage intelligence is fire damage i thought it was strength and then strength is your earth damage that's why my earth skills are doing crazy damage but my fire skills wasn't i thought strength was fire damage but it was actually earth so what we're going to do is we're going to make this build and i call this the mud mage because what we're going to do is we're going to pump up and balance out so two stats are going to be equal to each other we're going to go with water damage and we're going to go with earth damage and this build i call the mud mage as simple as that it is it's pretty simple actually it's more basic than anything so what the first thing we're going going to do is with the first level up since on the test and we immediately go to level 15 uh in our skills or not not our skills sorry on our hero what wisdom does is it increases your experience gain and it also increases your evasion so at level 15 you get a total of 70 stat points so for the testing currently i think this build is going to be pretty good we're going to put all of our points into wisdom so that later on we get a payoff from the experience increase or the experience gain hopefully this is a theory because originally i was just going to go straight for the build but i think doing 70 points into wisdom might be effective so we're going to do that and see how this build turns out not only that to make the leveling go a lot quicker we're going to do every quest this guy has so we're going to do what we did before my playthrough uh for this build we're going to do all the quests like i said to just help us level up a lot faster so for the early game while we're leveling since we're going to be increasing our earth and water damage we're primarily going to use stone attack for during this test so we're going to max this out as quick as possible just so that we can start one-shotting one things each time we level up. And because we're leveling up our water damage as well, we're also going to take Drop, which is an AoE, but it, I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's it's like Earth Strike, but instead of being a single target, a single like one cast single target, this is a one cast AoE. So we're gonna be taking Drop as well, just for the extra damage. So not only is Drop going to help us with the leveling, but we're also going to be able to do things like this. We're going to be able to pile them up and drop our AoE just like that and it's just it's going to make leveling quicker basically. And by the time that we finish the first quest our stats look like this 50 chance 50 strength and 70 wisdom just like that and it's balancing out the two skills so I'm still one shotting things and I'm able to rotate between the two. So if enemies clump up I can drop my water AoE and clear them out really quick. If it's just a single target they're on your own or they're on their own. Then I hit my single target earth boulder thing, stone attack, and it takes them out. So not only that, after we complete the first quest, um, or no, yeah, sorry. After we complete the first quest, we get a full set of gear. And then not only that, we have runes in our inventory. So we can go with our chance rune, which is our water rune. And then we also have a strength rune which will increase our earth damage so we're going to use those to increase our stats even further for water and earth damage okay so now since we're able to take the cloud attack skill we're going to max that out and we can replace water drop or not dro water drop we can replace drop with cloud attack but personally i think having drop with cloud attack is actually pretty good because the cooldown on this is shorter and it still does aoe damage it's a one-time aoe damage but this is a deals down like it hits consistently for a couple of times so having another aoe water attack is pretty good because you can this the now the build's starting to form into where i can start killing multiple mobs a lot quicker now which is what we want to go for another really good skill that we can go for is mana regen so we're going to take mana regen because what what this does is it'll consume 95 of our stamina and it will regenerate our MP over time, I think. It's either instant, no, it's recovery. So it should be, yeah, MP recovery. So it should be uh, a regenerative skill for our mana. Uh, so now we're at level 50. Uh, we're going to take Magic Rain 
So we're, we're going to max out Magic Rain here. Well, once we can max it out, but we're going to use that because that adds another AoE ability that's water damage to our toolkit. Um, and then eventually we're going to end up with Earthquake, which will kind of polish the build off on top of Impact. And then after Impact, we're going to go for Critical Area. So anyone within the zone gains increased crit. So the goal is to basically drop down your crit, gain the crit buff, and then you just throw out a bunch of uh, AOE skills. So that, that's the build so far that I'm that I'm currently trying to make and show off. I do want to mention something really quick, which I think I forgot to mention the first time. So the goal with this build that I'm making is that I want to keep chance and strength equal to each other so that my earth damage and my water damage are on par with each other. So when I drop my AoE with earth and, earth and water, they, they, they're both doing the same amount of damage, and because they're doing the same amount of damage and I have a lot of earth and water skills, um, I can stack it on top of each other, so I'm just adding more and more and more damage on top. Currently, I have 155 chance and 155 strength, but I have five points left, so I can't keep my skills even. So because of this, I, I'm going to put the last point. So if I can't make those two stats even or equal to each other, I put the rest into wisdom for the experience game. So I'm going to show the build off here really quick. So right now I'm gathering up enemies, right? So then I can drop my earthquake. I can drop my water. And what you're doing is ba basically this is turning into like a farming build, basically. So you bring them all together. And then when they're when they're close together, then you go drop your AOE water, your AOE earth, your a more AOE water, and you just go back and forth. I'm pretty sure you should be able to clear stuff pretty quickly. So eventually, uh, as we level up, you'll also unlock Ice Strike, which is another AOE skill that deals water damage. So like like I keep saying, the goal with this build is to basically stack as much AOE as you possibly can with earth and water damage while keeping your stats of water and earth equal to each other and then when you can't make them equal then put the rest into wisdom all right so now we hit the level two now we have impact so the build is almost finished all we have left to grab so let's just do like a quick run over real quick okay so stone attack at level one we're going to use that primarily until we get drop and then we're going to be using uh stone attack and drop and then will eventually unlock cloud, cloudy attack and then magic rain and then earthquake and then after that you get ice strike and then impact and then after that we'll get critical area and then the build is finished and then at level 200 which is the current level cap then we're going to go with collective strengthening because an overall stat increase by plus 50 is pretty good so far into the build uh, for skills, we have we have drop, cloudy attack, mana regen, magic rain, earthquake, ice strike, impact, and now we have critical zone. So this is what it's kind of going to look like. Okay, so we're going to gather up some of these spiders to show off what we're going to do. So we're going to gather these guys up. We're going to drop. The crit buff we're going to start with our ice so everyone's stunned we're going to go with that earth and they're dead so that's kind of what i theorize is going to be good for farming you drop your crit buff you freeze everything so that it's all stunned and then you start unloading all of your aoe one after another so you dish out as much aoe damage while they're stunned and then you're still dishing out more aoe damage as they're coming out of stun so overall what i think i'm going to do now is we have our build finalized the only thing we don't have which I think might be the most crucial part of everything, is the Collective Strengthening, which I don't get until I'm level 200. So that's another 108 levels to go. But I think the build would still stand, and I still think it would be pretty good. Um, so I'm going to go fiddle around with runes and see if I can go make a couple of them, and to really see how far I can push my stats. Okay, so I did the math. In order for me to play around with the runes, I'm going to have to make make them. So in order to to make them, I I'm going to have to craft items and then dismantle them to get the rune powder. And so far, I made I made one rune powder, 
from crafting one item. So I did the math, and I figured out that one rune powder from the item I made, uh, or, yeah, one item gives me one rune powder, and then the item that, uh, that gave me the rune powder required three red feathers and then three goggle paws. So by doing just simple math, one rune powder would basically equal three red feathers and three goggle paws. But it takes ten rune powder to make one rune. So if I need to make one rune, that's thirty red feathers and three goggle paws, which equals my one rune. So if I'm going to make six, because I have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of gear, that would mean I would need 60 rune powder, which is 180 red feathers and 180 goggle paws. So this might take me a little bit to grind, but don't worry, that's where the power of editing comes in. Uh, so the hardest part of all of this is done now. 180 of the red feathers. And now we just got to get the 180, 180 uh, goggle paws. So then we can start messing around with the um, runes and whatnot. So I'll see you guys then. Uh, I should also mention really quick that I asked the developer if the higher level items would reward reward. De Sorry, I'm really tired. I got off work. So the question was if the higher level items gave more uh, rune powder. In which case it does, and he gave me a little spreadsheet. So from 1 to 40 gives 1, 41 to, 41 to 80 gives 2, 81 to 120 gives 4, 121 to 160 gives 8, 161 to 199 gives 16, and then level 200 gear gives you 64 each time you dismantle the, the items. Okay, there we go. We got all of the items selected. We got our 60 rune powder bulk dismantle and now we have 60 rune powder of what we need to start making our runes all okay, right so now we have our rune powder we have a rune powder 60 we need to make the six runes we got our yellow powder to make the earth runes and then we got our blue powder to make the water runes so here we go I also just realized I made a mistake, I made the wrong runes. And that kind of has me a little tilted, because farming all that materials took me like a decent amount of time. And the Pacha, or the Pacha rune is plus 20 of a stat. I made the base version, which only gives us plus 10. But we're just, we're, we're just going to see how far we can pump up our damage with the runes anyway, though. So I don't really think it matters much. So after, so after getting our gear socketed so we have plus 10 water on that we have plus 10 water on our ring uh, we got plus 20 earth on our helmet plus 20 earth on our cape plus 10 water on our belt and plus 10 earth on our boots so with that we are sitting at 399 chance 399 strength and the extra points that I gained that I was able to spare into wisdom we are sitting at 138 right now and keep also keep in mind this is all level one gear the server this game is still in heavily testing that's why we why I can get to level 160 really really fast but this is just something I think would be actually really useful later in the end game when you start designing your build um, I think this build would actually be pretty useful because it's really good for farming uh, multiple mobs at the same time. So now I'm just going to show you guys uh, what it looks like. So we even have a self heal now, which is really nice. I'm just going to check my skills real quick to see if I can upgrade any of them. We can make magic rain level 6 now. And that looks like it's about it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to... Go like that, 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 and then we're going to drop our crit, we are then going to then drop our lightning, our earth, and they're dead really, really fast. So I think this might be, I feel like playing as a mud mage is probably going to be really, really good for farming. 
So now I'm going to gather these guys up again, but we're going to pop everything, uh, like everything on cooldown. Well, not all the skills, but I mean like the DPS skills plus one of the skills. So we get them all grouped up. We go drop our crit, hit greed, lightning, and we're nearly almost hitting 300s. And that's with only this much of our stats. Plus greed bumps our water damage to 549. Um, plus we have the crit uh, buff. So overall, I think this build is going to be really, really nice for farming. So besides that, that's pretty much the whole video. Yeah, so I'll see you guys later. Peace out.